Welcome to another episode of Help Without Sight, episode 54 with Jill Schultz, uh, right. with your host, Taylor Cooper, and who is this? This is Tyler Evans. Yeah, we're here on another episode, two episodes back to back. So a summary of this guest in this deeply moving episode, we are joined by Jill, who's a brave individual who's chosen to step into the light to address a very taboo topic that is often in darkness and shame and Jill shares her story of grappling with the repercussions of childhood sexual trauma and the subs and the subsequent experimentation of other children after 41 years of living under the cloud of shame and self-loving Jill has found her purpose in liberating others from the shackles of shame associated with this very sensitive topic through her courageous efforts she aims to change the narrative surrounding children who's experienced sexual trauma in their interactions with peers. So join us as, as we delve into a conversation that seeks to foster healing, understanding, and a pathway to a life filled with love, success, and abundance. Please welcome Jill Schultz. Jill, you, you sound very good today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. So uh, you must have a very deep, troubled, you know, background. So take us all the way back as far as you could go. I mean, if you don't want to share everything, it's totally fine. But share what you want to share. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to just take a minute and prepare people because what I get to share is a story that people aren't talking about. And so I am creating a movement to really bring this out into the light to help people get past the shame. So I want you to know if this is your story and if this is the first time that you're hearing somebody talk about it live or if it's the first time that you're having a memory of it, you know, I I see you and I'm I'm holding you in my heart and please know that you get to get help, you get to talk about it, you get to find support and my only, only hope is that I get to help set people free from the shame that I lived with for 41 years. So just Whoa. setting the space for that's really important to me because I need to make sure people are protected and that people are, you know, supported. So, um, so would you say a listener discretion is advised with this episode or because yeah. I know it's sensitive? Yes, it is very sensitive. Yeah. So if you, have, if you have littles, you might want to exit, have them exit the building um, and, you know, just be prepared for, for a little bit of a hard topic. But I'm really happy that I get to share it because I lived in shame for 41 years around this. And I'm just, you know, when God, and I don't know if you believe in God, if you don't believe in God. Do. We do. Oh, we do. We just, like, we just, we just got finished with an episode. About God. We just got finished with an episode with a Christian lady who's a pastor and talked about God. Yeah. So this okay. is. Oh, yeah. Segue. She's great. Oh, awesome. yeah. Well, you know, when when God first asked me to do this, obviously, I was like, no. <laughs> but now I get to see everything that I've gone through the past 41 years as a gift, because now I get to share my story and hope that I get to help people collapse time and 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 get past the shame and love themselves and forgive themselves. So. Um, I, and I, I have to say that I'm really grateful for the Me Too movement because, you know, this is around sexual trauma and I, I, I'm grateful that those brave people, you know, stood up and talked about what had happened to them because I feel like now it's more of a open space to be able to share around sexual trauma, but my story goes deeper than that. Um, I was molested when I was three or four years old. I don't remember who did it. Uh, I've done therapy around it and I was told that I probably don't remember because it was probably somebody that was really close to me, somebody that I really loved. Oh. Uh, but what, where my story goes is because of what somebody taught me to do, I acted out with other children in that way. So I was acting out sexually with other children and I was, Horrible. In, oh. yeah, yeah. And the ages that that was happening was in between seven and 12. And I lived with debilitating shame around that 
for years and years and years and years. And so, you know, if this is your story, if this is, like I said, the first time you're hearing somebody talk about this, if you're having a triggering memory that this happened to you, please find somebody to talk to. There's lots and lots and lots of places that you can go for help. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to share my website real quick because I've put your information in the chat. Sure. Whatever you have your contact info, if you can put it in the chat, I'll put mine in there too. So when you have it all, that'd be great. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. Now I got to put my readers on to see, (laughs) make sure I'm typing it right. (laughs) It's just jilleschultz.com is my website. And on the website, there's a resources section and there's a a section that says get help. And there's lots and lots of um, opportunities for people to reach out. And it it can be anonymously. If you want to reach out and share your story anonymously, it can certainly be in an anonymous way so that you can um, get help around this. So that's kind of my story just (laughs) in a nutshell. Well, so after you were sexually molested by a close post close relative you think it was so you did it at seven years old to other children or what yeah I started acting out that's the earliest that I can remember acting out was when wow I was seven years I'm old. surprised like if you don't mind me asking I'm surprised you weren't like charged or anything because that that's very serious right there because of the age that's why I wasn't, you know, I, in fact, I did a lot of research before I started sharing my, well, that's not true. I started sharing my story immediately. As soon as I was like, okay, this is my purpose. I started sharing my story and I had, I had a a, a major hiccup a, along the road where somebody told me, you know, Hey, you know, I would, I would get legal counsel around this because, you know, you may be, um, um, can considered a sexual uh what is it? sorry i just forgot not sexual, sexual predator. Predator. um s- <sighs> registered as a sex offender thank you registered uh-huh. as a sex uh-huh. offender and and you you could be charged with a felony but because i was under the age of 14 in my state it's something that they would not um move forward with but it's still i mean it's a hard thing to talk about it's a hard thing to yes. admit to um but you know children do what people teach them and of course and it you know to say it honestly it was something that felt good so you know you were taught that way you were taught you were taught um to do that and because you know children learn from older people and adults so like you were conditioned to that yeah and you see i was very lucky that i never went through that because i could have gone through that you know why i won't be the specifics but my father was no good uh, he abandoned me and my sister when we were uh, after we were born. He was not happy with the pregnancy to begin with, and uh, oh, yeah, be careful how I say this. It, it, he's a the best way I could say it, he's a pedophile and womanizer, mm-hmm. and he he has multiple affairs with women under age, and he he can't do it in the states because he knows he's in big trouble so he goes to other countries like colombia and cuba and the caribbean to do it and thank god that he was not in my life because mm-hmm. i would have that influence and uh it it would not been good unfortunately my half sister you know i love her i i i, I feel really bad for her. she she went through that because uh she was raised by him by him and she was, of course, she was exposed to that. She she knew nothing better. Like she was conditioned, and so uh, she's doing a lot better now. But she's just so confused. Like she doesn't know what's normal and what's not. And uh, one one major uh, topic I've been campaigning on is it kind of relates to this. I hate toxic masculinity and machismo yeah i can't stand this epidemic of men that's not the way men should behave men should honor their their wives and children and family and machismo is about toxic masculinity is all about to be being tough i'm still here right yeah you're still here it's, it's about being tough you know, manning up. It's about sexual prowess. It's about, uh, I, 
I want to end this epidemic now. Yeah. And I'm not surprised whoever did this to you, he had massive toxic masculinity in him, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I have, it's, I forgave the person who hurt me a long time ago. And, and in the healing process, when it, when it comes to this, it's really, really important that you forgive whoever it was who hurt you because it's if really hard. you holding on to, it's only hurting you. You're not forgiving that person for them. You're forgiving that person for you. And I, I truly believe that whoever hurt me, somebody hurt them too. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. So, um, I try and see the positive in, in things as I move forward through this. And I, I love that your show is about hope and inspiration and oh, yes. Yeah. And so I, yeah. want, I want people to know that when you, when life happens outside our comfort zone, you know, when you, when you face the hard things in your life and you look at them dead in the eye and you say, you don't own me anymore and you can forgive yourself and you can love yourself. That's when you get to have this blank canvas where you get to create the life that you deserve to have the life that you love. And so I love that you guys are really about, you know, hope and inspiration. And it's really, really wonderful. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah. yeah. And maybe you could be instrumental in helping us too. And which you have a newfound purpose yeah. in your painful past. You've taken up a mantle to address this, uh, to address the topic of childhood sexual abuse and the complex dynamics. Yeah. So you advocate. What all do you do? Well, so this whole thing's pretty new to me. You know, I... I, it's taken a long time for me to get to the place where I've healed. And once I got there, I had prayed for my purpose for a very long time. I'm 55 years old. I didn't get my purpose until I was 53 years old. And it was actually quite painful because I knew I have, I run several businesses and I love what I do, but I knew it wasn't at the core of why I was here. And so when when God finally showed me that this, this gets to be where I get to take things, I, I started to see it as a gift. You know, I really get to see everything that's happened up until now as a gift. And I remember several years ago listening to an Oprah show or watching an Oprah show. And she said, I, I, I want to be part of something that's bigger than myself. I want to be part of something that's bigger than myself. And I wrote that down. And be careful what you pray for, because now I get to step out and I get to share this really vulnerable story in the hopes that, you know, I can help people heal quickly and, you know, find that self-love and that, that self-forgiveness. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's really and, good. And, you know, we're doing a lot of stuff. Tyler, if you can tell Jill what we're doing, maybe we can invite her to these events, right? I'd love that. Yes, indeed. We have one event coming up, hopefully uh, soon, the first Thursday in October, hopefully we'll be premiering it. It's a Lift Your Spirit party. And it's at well, we 7 premiered it already. We're just going to relaunch it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've had it before, but we're relaunching it. Um, is it is it virtual? Yeah, on Zoom. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one's free. Um, there's another event that we're going to do. And it is a, it's a membership based deal. It's a uh, basically it's a blissful life community. And that's $25 a month. Or you can pay $300 for an entire year okay. for the membership. And it's a Zoom event, too. But it's more in depth. It's more uh, um, in depth than what the Lift Your Spirit Party is. The Lift Your Spirit Party is like a preview. Sure, I love it. Well, thank you for putting yeah. that in the chat too. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And we also have the chat for the number. You can text the word "bliss." Bliss to eight three two four eight one six eight zero six. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I'm putting this information in the chat too. Absolutely. So, um, you know, one of the things that concerns me a little bit 
um, there are men uh, who have been falsely accused of sexual abuse. Let's say there's like some men have. I'm not saying that it's very, very common, but it does occur. Um, what would you say to those men who may have been falsely accused and their reputations have been damaged oh, basically? Definitely. Yeah, that's a hard, that's a hard <laughs> question for me. Um, yeah, because there are some, men, I'm sorry. There are some men who have been falsely accused. Yeah. So. Uh, the only reason I say that's a hard question for me is because number one, no one's ever asked me that question. N number two, I've never really uh, thought about it. And yeah, you know, I, I don't want to give an opinion on something that is not yeah. something that's really in my wheelhouse, but right. I think this is what I would say. And I think that this, if, if it, it might be hard to hear, but I think life happens for us. I believe that everything happens in our life is for us. And just like my abuse, when I was abused, you know, I really believe that it happened for a reason. I believe it happened for, so that I could be this person today and I could talk about it. So, um, you know, just hold on to hope that, you know, you get your name cleared and exactly you know, pray that something good comes out of it. You know, oh, yeah, I believe I believe that every bad circumstance something good can come out of it you yeah. know yeah that's what i believe yeah. you know me and sailor sailor and i rather we were both born three months premature weren't expected to survive and we both had a twin whose eyes reversed from blindness to sight except i have a twin brother he okay. has a twin sister he has a twin sister mm -hmm. and it's really cool um, you know, he mentioned having a half sister too. Um, yes. but the twin sister, as far as I know, is not the half sister. No, uh, but, but yeah. Um, but I have a twin brother and he's fully sighted. He drives, he does everything, you know, he works and, um, it's really cool how our stories are really similar. And what's interesting about my story, I have a twin, I have an, I keep saying twin, I have a half sister also um from a different uh father he was abusive to my mom before she ever met my dad just you know abusive yeah, um, how, yeah. how did you guys meet we me, me and me and I, we met in college okay yeah we went to stephen f austin university in nacogdoches yeah well, you, and we I were in a you. club we were in a club not... called we, we were in a club called the Braille and Cane Club, and that's how we met. It's an advocacy group for the blind, actually, okay. which is really cool. And, you know, it's just we just we just clicked, like, yeah, you know, being best friends. And years later, we said, you know what? We've been looking, looking, looking for work. We said, you know, a lot of employers don't want to hire blind people because they make up every excuse in the book. And so we said, you know what? We're just going to do our own thing. Yes, we are. Goes. Here we are. And so, yep. Jill, if you can help us promote our events, I put everything in the chat, including my contact information. So, as always, if you can please save the chat, save the chat, save the chat, that'd be yes. great. Yes. Absolutely. And who knows? Maybe you might be on the payroll one day. I don't know. We'll That's see. up to yeah. Love it. Um, I'm hopefully going to be on the payroll in the coming months. Maybe. Yeah. But, we um, shall see. But, uh, yeah, beautiful. So, um, Jill, like, so did you you dealt with 41 years of a shame, not like practicing on children themselves, right? No, 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 no. I was, yeah, that's good. No, that's good. no, no. The last time was when I was 12 years old. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, you did say that. Yeah. And you know, it's really interesting. So I've written a book and my book is coming out November 1st. I'm really proud of this book and it's called liberated, liberated, releasing the dark cloud of shame. And um, there's several other people who have contributed to the book. Once I started sharing my story, it was unbelievable to me, the number of people that was like, that said, you know, that's, that's my story too. That's my story too. 
And oh, wow. so that's how the book came about. And I don't know why I just started talking about the book. There was a point you said something to me and that there was a, oh, oh I know what I was going to say. So I, I, you had asked me about if I was still hurting children 41 years later. No, I was still a child the last time that that happened. And um, it, as I was talking to people and as people were sharing their stories, Around the age of 12 is about the same age that other children who were like me had stopped doing it. So I don't know what that age means, but it was really interesting to me that probably, around 12 years old was when probably it, puberty, like they realized and, maybe, yeah, knowing that yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Because of course, children they're young, they don't they don't they don't know better, they don't know about this sexual stuff, you know. No, no, they just think, oh, it's just a something that just makes you feel good they don't have a concept yet yeah like, i want to make it very clear i was not acting out with children for 41 years oh yeah right. yeah I was just doing it was in the day between the ages so, when i was seven years old and 12 years old so you just you just yeah. felt uh yeah. you just felt the shame of it all and you finally have let go of it right i i have now yeah for yeah it took a long time but that you know what i would say to people is do the work you know look at it talk to somebody. That's the first step. Get it out of your body and say it out loud. Even if it's just you saying it in the mirror, I'll share that. I remember um, the first time that I talked about it, I was 33 years old and I, I had started going to therapy because I realized that I wasn't connecting with men. I would be in a room and a man would walk in the room and he would look at me and I would immediately look down ah. and I never wanted a man to see me. And I thought, oh my God, if this man sees me, how can he love me knowing what I've done? And now I get to say, how can he not love me knowing what I've been through, knowing, you know, knowing what I, how I get to help people now. And, but when I would go into to therapy those first couple of times and I would have to share my story with with the therapist I had this just huge knot in my stomach because honestly I thought I was the only child that ever did this I thought I was the only child that ever acted out like this and so having to walk into a room and share my deepest darkest secret with somebody was terrifying and since then, every single time that I've shared my story, the level of love and kindness and understanding and compassion that's been on the other side of that has been just unbelievably beautiful. So I want people to know your biggest fear of telling somebody about this, your biggest fear that they're going to look at you and they're going to think you're a monster and a pedophile is not true. It's false. And you get to release yourself from this. You get to get it out of your body. Only do it with someone who you trust. And that's yes. why you went to a therapist, right? Yeah. And yeah. you didn't do this until you were 30s. Wow. 30, 33. Yep. And, uh, and so of course you wouldn't tell your family, you wouldn't tell your parents because they were afraid that you were afraid that they would criticize you and stuff. I didn't tell my parents until five years ago. And what did they, and how did they react? They, they were extremely compassionate. They're very supportive of everything that I'm doing right now. And they're, you know, they were, they're just like, we don't know how you could have been hurt by somebody else. We watched you all the time. We knew where you were all the time. And so for a parent, there's this deep level of shame knowing that their baby had gotten hurt by somebody. And, and the thing is, is most often it is somebody that's close to you. The, the whole story of the boogeyman in the bushes waiting to molest a child is, is very, very, very rare. It's typically somebody who's very close to that, to that child, somebody who has access to that child, an uncle, a cousin, a brother, you know, so um, they have been amazing and, um, but they have felt really, really badly about the fact that it happened to me, you know, but I get to share that, that now I get to see this as a gift. And, and like I said earlier, I think everything happens for us. And this happened for a reason for me to now be able to, to share my story. So, and so they had no idea. They thought everything was totally fine. They had no idea that you had kept a complete secret. Um, no, they, they knew actually. So they they didn't know that I had been um, molested, but they 
did know that I had acted out when I was younger. But they didn't know why. But it was something that we kept as a secret for years and years and years and years. Like we never talked about it. And, you know, nobody, nobody knows what to say in this kind of a situation. There's no training manual if you have a child that's acted out. So I want you to know that too. If you're a parent and your child has acted out, there's, I'm I'm not saying this to keep plugging my book, but I want to be able to help people. And there's actually a chapter in my book um, that talks about what to do. I, my therapist wrote a chap chapter in my book about what to do if your child has been hurt or what conversations to have with your child so that they are not put in a situation where they can get hurt, like where they know how to have boundaries and they know what to say so that they are not, um, so that they're not hurt. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, sex can be beautiful. You just have to do it responsibly you know yeah and so your book's coming out in november is where where will it be available it will be available on my website which is in the chat jillyschultz.com um there's actually it we're doing a pre-sale right now so you're welcome to go there and it'll be ready to purchase in the next week so if you want to go on there um and purchase that it'll be available to purchase in the next week well in the chat you'll see i have a book that came out last may Awesome. How to navigate life's challenges and understand different personalities and get along. And one of my favorite chapters in there is machismo and toxic masculinity, which you know by now I'm not a fan of. Yes. I'm proud of the man who I am and I'll never become that type of man. And um, I even include song analysis, analyses in there to relate emotions to music because they say music is therapy without a doubt. Oh yeah. I die for music. Like uh, that's my biggest passion is music. I just, it, it is so healing and releasing and like, yeah, I, I, I'm obsessed with music. You would say. Yeah. 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 So uh, other than that, do you have anything else? Because if not, like, what are your future goals? Yeah. Thank you for asking that. Um, So what I would say is, you know, if this is your story, please find somebody to talk to, please find somebody safe. If you need it to be anonymous, find one of the resources. The first step is, is getting it out of you and, you know, getting it out of your body. Um, my goals are just to share this anywhere and everywhere that I can when I first, so I believe that every desire on our heart was given to us by God. Yes, it was. And I believe that I'm, I love manifesting. Like I have a beautiful morning practice and it's this little dance. Manifestation. Yes. It's this little dance I do with God every day. And when I, when I first um, decided that I was going to take this on, I heard of a woman named Amanda Francis. She wrote a book. I won't say it. It's rich as F. Um, but she's ma- a manifesting queen. And she she's the one that said, you know, everything on our heart was given to us by God. And it's your only job every day to feel what it feels like to have that and know that you get to have that. And I saw a vision of Tony Robbins right after I decided to, to write this book. And so my big, big, big vision is I get to align with Tony Robbins and he gets to help me promote this book, whether it's me speaking on his stage or whatever it looks like. I don't know. God is just keeps telling me that it gets to happen. So that's my big, big, big goal is getting on big stages to share my story, to help people get past the shame. Yeah. And speaking of manifestation, I have a wonderful lady in my life. She's my favorite aunt. Of course, she's known me since I was born. She and I talked about the art of manifestation and what you're saying brings it truly. I love it. Hit, hits home. And yeah. I hope to manifest that I'm, I'm we're successful in this business. Now I find the love my life, a good lady. And yeah, it's all wonderful. It's great. I love it. Music and manifesting. Those are my two passions. Me too. Me too. And so yes. how can people talk anonymously? Like who can they go to? What are some resources? And if you can put those in the chat, that'd be great. Can they even go to you? Yeah. Well, I would love to say that I'm the person for them to come to, but I'm not a therapist. Um, so I'm not qualified to get into the weeds with people about what their shame is. I do have a website called um, Living Unshamed, where it's a community of people 
like-minded people. Um, but the best place that I would say to go it, for resources to get help is my website, jilleschultz.com. Under resources, under get help, there's an organization called RAIN that is yeah, um, an, an anonymous place for people to go. There's also a an incest organization. So if, if this is something that you have shame around. There's a, there's a website there for that. There's about 10 different resources there. There's also a resource for sex trafficking. There's a suicide hotline. Um, so just wherever you're at, please make sure that you are taking care of you and you're getting help because I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it is so beautiful on the other side of healing. Like I say, I used to have this dark cloud, like it was always over my head and it was this shame that I had and I'd wake up and it was there and I'd go to sleep and it was there and it was always there. And now that I've been able to release that and forgive myself and love myself, the cloud is gone. I look for the cloud oh, yeah. and it's gone. And as and, long as people like ask for help and talking honestly, like it's like they won't report them or anything, right? No, even though they did something wrong, they won't. No. Yeah. So they won't. What's up? As long as people get help and talk anonymously, like they won't report them like to authorities uh, or anything like I that. I don't know about adults. I, I don't know how that works. If you're an adult and you're, um, you know, you're hurting children. I, I don't know Probably. what like it probably uh, yeah they probably would but well, like, some children case, I, like think you. Some cases, I think in some cases they have to report it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know dr phil dr phil is a mandated reporter like so yeah. if he were to suspect or even know a crime is taking place he has to report it mandatory you know? reporter yeah even uh, though he is a uh yeah. i really like dr phil i mean i'm a big fan of him because um, of course there's forgiveness yeah. and all that you know yeah, absolutely and that doesn't mean you're uh, free from all the consequences necessarily. You know, you can be forgiven, but you can still suffer consequences of uh, your actions, particularly criminal. Yeah. You know, because sometimes yeah. you got to be the. Luckily, like this happened to you as a child. You did this as a child and not an adult. That's how you you were able to, you know, get past it without any severe consequences. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And, yeah. uh, also, who's Tony Robbins? He's very famous. So who who is he? Who is yeah? He? Who Tony is Robbins he? is a, a speaker. He's um he he's he has a huge 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 influence. Um, he's a really beautiful soul, and he's got different conferences. Like I did one of his called um, "Unleash the Power Within," and and honestly, that was another phase in my in my healing being at his conference. Um. So any type of work that people can do like that, I've done landmark education. I did hardcore leadership. Um, hardcore was, and I don't know if it's because that's in my life where I was at the place where I really was ready to let go of everything, but I got massive, massive healing for myself. I didn't love myself until I was 51 years old. Wow. And so just four years ago when I was in that program is where I got to release a lot of this and so find, you know, those types of workshops are amazing too. If you want to get through it quickly, like really look at it and do the work um, to get past all of this. It's never too late to, to find joy. I'm trying to align with people because, the, and I, I don't even know how to say this, but I feel like old therapy is, you know, some people go to therapy for 20 years for the same issue. And now there's a lot of new modalities and there's new techniques that people can use and, and, and participate in to get past the pain faster. So that is my goal now is to get aligned with other therapists and things like that, that are doing different types of healing that helps people get there quicker. Wow. So go. tell me, are you married or anything like that now? I am not. I'm looking for love. I'm very single and but very open. Yeah. I I get to, you know, all of this shame held me back from from love. It held me back from um, success <laughs> in my businesses. And yeah. now I know that I I get to have the most beautiful man in my life, and I get to have success in my businesses. And so um, beautiful. And. One last thing. Yeah. Uh, I know this is sensitive, but I'm sure you don't mind. Will you ever so love that you were on the brink of suicide? 
That is a great question. You know what? I never contemplated suicide until I was writing the book. Wow. Yeah. And honestly, that was all tied up. And you know how I talked earlier about whether I could be registered as a sex offender or whether I um, would be brought up on charges as a child for this. When right. all of that was happening, I thought this book has to get out. I am not going to sacrifice my soul and go to jail to get this book out there. So I thought, okay, if I write this book, what if I'm just not here? You were afraid of the repercussions, I hear you. Yeah, I knew the book needed to be out there. I was afraid of the repercussions. So I thought if I'm not here, if the book is written and the book is out there. So that was the only time that I ever had that thought. And can I, do we need to go? Can I share a really quick story? No, no, we we got time. Okay. So, um, we talked about music and, you know, when it comes to manifesting and creating the life that you love and God loves for you to test him around manifesting. So, um, one of the things that I said was, okay, God, if you really want this book out there, I want to hear Sia unstoppable. Oh, oh, that's that that song just came out. Sia. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I think Sia went through some bad stuff too. I think, right. She, yeah, I, I, I know that she is in, she's in recovery. Um, I don't know much about her past, but she was really pivotal. That song was really pivotal in this book. And so it took a couple of weeks for me to hear the song. And, and when all of that was happening with the legal stuff, I heard Sia unstoppable. My girlfriend who I had told that's that song was, you know, kind of a, well, kind of what this book is about, you know, it was like very pivotal in this book happening. She heard the song the same day and, and called me. But so that song came out in 2016. That song was originally released in 2016. And this year, this last year on New Year's Eve, 2023, New Year's Eve on the Miley Cyrus um, New Year's Eve ball drop, Sia sang Unstoppable. Wow. And there was no reason for her to sing it because it had been released a long time ago. So that was just a little sign from God for me that I was on the path. But when it came to, you know, you asked me about, did I ever think about killing myself? And I knew that when I heard that song, that God was going to work everything out. And he has surrender has been my word for the year. Like I've had to surrender and I knew that this was God's project, not mine. I just get to be the vessel that he works through. He's guiding you. He's guiding me and he's, he's figuring everything out. So every time there's an obstacle or every time there's a hiccup, I'm like, all right, God, you figure it out. And, and he keeps, keeps figuring it out. So if you are in a place where you've contemplated suicide, just to bring it back around, please, please, please get help because it's, it's, it's bright and beautiful on the other side. I promise you. So to be clear, you started writing a book five, five years ago, less than that. No, no, no. In fact, I didn't want to even write a book. I, when I first agreed to do this with God, all I wanted to do was get on stages and shout my you know, my story from the rooftop so I could help people. And I have a really good friend. He's a um, international speaker. His name's PJ. And I talked to him and he said, if you want to get on stages, you got to write a book. And I'm like, I don't want to write a book. Wow. The book came about. And that also came from me sharing my story. I told you earlier that there's other authors in the book. And um, every time I would share my story and somebody would be like, that's my story. So that's part of wow. who the authors are in the book now. Or they're anonymously speaking in the book. I am not anonymously speaking in the book. I'm putting it all out there. Wow. Yeah. And so even if, even if this book comes out, if they wanted to charge you, I mean, they couldn't because number one, you were a child, but also surely this, since you did this a long time ago, there's no evidence, right? Or how does this work? I would love to answer that question, but it's legal. Um, All I know is I hired an attorney to make sure that I was okay to share my story. And she said, yes, because of the state that I lived in and because I was under the age of 14, I'm able to talk about this, which I'm grateful for because, you know, I thought, okay, do I need to release the book anonymously and, you know, all that stuff, but God has cleared that path. And now here I am. Yeah, yeah. No. you're only sharing it not to like 
post drama, you're sharing it to help others. I'm and, sharing it to help others, yeah. And and so like what state do you live in? Where do you live in? I'm in California. Oh, California. Oh, wow. LA area? Where? No, I'm in San Diego. Oh, San Diego, near Tijuana, Mexico. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 15 that, minutes from my house. Yeah, but uh, no, we're, here, we're in Texas. But uh, yeah, okay. but it's, it's, uh, that's awesome work. So other than that, your future goals include re- releasing a book, just doing advocacy, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, one last question, our customary yeah. ending. Oh. What would you say to someone who's struggling in life and doesn't know where to turn? I know you can answer it so well. Take it away. Yeah. Um, like I said, just, you know, find an organization. There's so many resources on, on Facebook and I know we're streaming live right now. Like you can just type into the search bar, any topic, and you're going to find a support group in that space. Um, and life happens outside your comfort zone. So look at the hard things in your life, face them head on. Shame cannot live in the light. And so Only get bliss can. Yes. Bliss, bliss, bliss. I love the word bliss. What about you? I do too. I love that word. And hopefully you can join our blissful life community. I love it. Well, let's yeah. connect because we have each other's emails address. So send me the information and uh, I would love that. Yeah. If you can please like, uh, if you can like exchange your information in the chat, I put my contact card in there. If you can shape, save the chat, you click on my contact link. There's okay. a button called exchange contact that way I can have all my contacts in one place. So if okay. you can do that, that'd be great. Uh, I will have you tell me how to do that when we stop this. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, well, wonderful. Well, um, yeah, well, uh, thanks so much for being on Help Thank Without Sight. Everybody give it up for Jill Schultz. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me today. Stay blessed, everybody and live life in bliss. We hope you feel renewed, inspired, and encouraged like you can just carry on and conquer the world. Please hit the subscribe button on all platforms and tell your friends and family to do the same. Blessings to all.